Uh, welcome back to uh, this uh, afternoon session for the Global Air and Space Chiefs Conference. We have a really packed session, so much debate to come, uh, focusing, of course, on our shared security concerns. And uh, we do, of course, want to get all of your questions. Please do keep them coming through on Slido, but also do raise your hand. Uh, we will have more scouts out in the audience, making sure that we know exactly who wants to answer a question, and we'll get uh, those through to the panelists. But before we do invite our esteemed panel onto the floor, we're going to have uh, a few words from Air Marshal Greg Bagwell, who is going to uh, set the scene for us. So please do give him a warm welcome. Thanks, Susanna. Uh, I was, uh, so I'm the president of the Air and Space Power Association that uh, basically um, delivers a conference on behalf of the chief and obviously on behalf of all of you here. So, uh, we've done a few of these now. I've, I've actually forgotten how many, so I can't even quote the number. Um, but I still believe this to be one of the greatest forums for a debate on air and space power. I think we all know in this room particularly that uh, the, the, the challenge that we face has probably never been more difficult. Uh, and we're certainly going to tackle some of those issues over the next coming uh, sessions. Uh, and last year, of course, we talked only a few months into the war in Ukraine. And now we find ourselves one year on from that point, with that war still going on and bitter as it is, um, but with Ukraine stronger every day and hopefully will ultimately prevail, albeit with a lot of our help. Um, my first welcome is to all of you here at conference and those in the virtual world listening too, but a particularly warm welcome to all our overseas visitors. The overseas chiefs and all their delegations, um, it's always a great pleasure to have you here and your team. And I know you'll be going on hopefully to, uh, to watch maybe a slightly rainy air show at the weekend, but we'll see. Um, but it's always a pleasure to have you here. And may I just say a particularly warm welcome, although they've been attendees at this conference for an awful long time now, uh, Finland and Sweden. I know Sweden are yet to get the dotted line signs, uh, but it is so great to have you two already strong allies of us, but now to become part of NATO, which, as an old 80s Cold War warrior, warms the cockles of my heart. Um, we won't get onto cluster munitions, but that was my specialist subject <laughs> as a weapons instructor. Um, so thank you to everyone. Uh, another thank you to Susanna. I'll, I'll be thanking her again at the end, who does such a fantastic job of running this far better than I could, uh, which is how we used to do it. And another thank you to all of those people, all those companies mentioned here on the right-hand side of the slide. Without you, not only would this conference not happen, but air power probably wouldn't happen very well either. Um, because you're such an integral part of that. But we'll hear more about that as the conference goes on. Please enjoy this conference. Please enjoy the opportunity to talk. We want this to be challenging. For those that don't know about the association, we were set up just after the Second World War to promote air power thinking because it was a recognition at the time that air power was not well understood out in the general public. And I think we have another challenge. If you look at Ukraine today, there are youngsters, there are even ex-retired soldiers, one of whom may be speaking here tomorrow afternoon, who think that air power can be done differently now, because look what, how it's done in Ukraine. And we have a double challenge to make people understand what actually air power and space power involves in a modern conflict. More importantly, what you need to do in order to deter those conflicts in the first place. So we do have a challenge. This audience may very well believe what we hear in this room and believe it to the bottom of their heart. But there is a community out there that doesn't understand it as well as we do, and we need to help educate them and help them to understand too. And I can't think of anybody better to start that off than the new chief of the Royal Air Force. Uh, I've known Sir Rich for an awful long time, and I could not think of a better person to, to lead this service through the next few years of a challenge. But it would be remiss of me not to say a warm farewell on behalf of all of you to Sir Mike, who obviously has departed and moves on to pastures new. It used to be traditional that the chief would do the final react, and it would be his, his hurrah, his final farewell. And Sir Mike has very uh, magnanimously actually stood down in order for Sir Rich to, to make his, uh, his new friendships um, so solidified over this weekend. So that's enough from me. Um, I'm going to hand off to Sir Rich now. Sir Rich is a distinguished officer in his own right and has done some of the jobs that I was never clever enough to do. Um, he understands the way defence works. He understands how things work. So that's two things pilots can't do. Um, and so... All this nonsense about uh, it needs to be a pilot to, uh, to lead the Air Force is uh, absolutely untrue, and I could not think of a better person to lead the Air Force with the challenges it faces over the next two years. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Richard Knighton, Chief of the Air Force. Uh, 
Uh, thanks very much. I, I wasn't sure when Greg said for the next two years whether he was saying that's the longest I was going to do as chief or not. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a bit longer than that, but thank you very much, Greg. Um, so I won't say very much because I want to get us into the panel and get us into the, the conversation, but I wanted to add my personal thanks on behalf of the Royal Air Force to all of you who are here today, particularly those from our allied air forces who are here, but actually to everybody from industry and the commentators who are here. It is this collection that makes this such a special event. And it is by being challenging and working together and developing our thinking together that will give us that strategic and operational advantage that we are going to demand. What air power is and what we do is more important now than it has been throughout the whole of my career. And I'm delighted that we are all coming together, that we have this fantastic convening power run brilliantly by ASPA to bring us all together to have those conversations and to really move our thinking forward and enhance our chances of winning in the future. I'm enormously indebted to Sir Mike for the changeover period. I'm now on day 41, not that I'm counting, um, but <clears throat> day 41 today, and it is a fantastic opportunity as the new chief to A, come here and meet so many of you in this new role and build those relationships, but also to have the opportunity to set out some of the key issues that we're going to face as a Royal Air Force and I think as Allied Air Forces over the next three or four years, Greg. Um, but thank you all very much indeed for being here. Thank you for the wonderful support. And I look forward to seeing you and talking to you tomorrow. Thanks all very much. Thanks.